Family sedans, they're all the same, right? Ask someone about a Toyota Camry 10 years ago and the word appliance might come to mind. But the 2017 Toyota Camry is no Cuisinart. Hi, I'm George Kennedy. The 2017 Detroit Auto Show just wrapped up and one of the big reveals was an all new completely redesigned 2018 Camry. Our own Matt Smith has coverage of that car, which you can find by clicking on the link here. So if an all new Camry is just around the corner, why look at one today? Well, based on what I saw, one strong reason to opt for the current 2017 Toyota Camry is its looks. 2017 marks the last year of the current Camry, which has been around since 2012. The look you see here is carried over from a 2014 facelift that made it one of the more attractive family sedans that you could buy. Seriously, look at a Nissan Altima or even the catfish that is the Chevy Malibu and tell me you wouldn't prefer to be caught driving one of these. And that's the big difference. The 18 has a distinct look to it. And while you don't want a boring family sedan, you don't want your car burning your eyes either. Trims of the Toyota Camry are LE, XLE, SE, and XSE. There are really two looks to the Camry. The traditional look in the LE and XLE, and the sport look in the SE and our XSE test model. The SE and XSE feature a rear spoiler, sport suspension, and most notably, a unique sport mesh front grille design. The SE has 17-inch alloy wheels, while our XSE features 18-inch machined alloy wheels. It all makes for a look that's sharp rather than shocking. Get inside and you'll notice the Camry has a pretty darn quiet cabin. Toyota spent time and money getting this part of the car right, but I wish the company had spent more time on the seats. Seat comfort is a little awkward and uncomfortable, and I don't think it's just my height. You have to struggle to find a good seating position, and that'll be tough over long drives. On the other hand, the rear seats are comfortable and spacious so the folks behind you might be better off on long drives than you are. Pop the trunk and you'll find 15.4 cubic feet of space, nearly the same as the Camry's closest rival, the Honda Accord. People might forget that in 2008, the Accord was well ahead of the Camry in a lot of ways, and it's good to see Toyota close the gap so thoroughly. Despite closing the gap, the Accord has a nicer fit and finish. The controls in the Camry are easier, but do feel cheaper compared to the Accords, but I'll take function over form any day so the Camry wins on its simple controls. Toyota has updated the Camry in meaningful ways throughout that time, and one of the new car's highlights is technology. The Camry comes with a USB port, Bluetooth hands-free calling and streaming music, as well as a backup camera. It's all accessed through a standard 6.1-inch touchscreen. Move up to the XLE or XSE, and you'll get a larger 7-inch touchscreen, navigation, and a suite of apps like OpenTable, Pandora, and Yelp. It's a great system, it even features Siri eyes free for iPhone users. But one thing it doesn't have, well, two things, are Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Toyota is still a holdout against Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, claiming its infotainment game is strong. But is it strong enough to keep potential buyers in the dealership when they learn they can't get the Camry with either of these systems? If this is a deal breaker for you, or not, let us know in the comments. The 2014 redesign wasn't just visual. Critics roasted the old Camry for its boring handling. Whether that actually mattered to the folks driving it may be up for debate, but Toyota spiced up the ride, and the SE and XSE kick it up even more with a sport suspension and paddle shifters to control the six-speed automatic transmission. That manages power from a 2.5-liter inline four-cylinder engine, which makes only 178 horsepower and 170 pound-feet of torque. Now, I know that's not a lot of power, but the Camry manages it well, and it can get out of its own way. Plus, the fuel economy isn't half bad either. Listed at 24 MPG City, 33 Highway, and 27 combined. Toyota also offers a V6 with 268 horsepower. But if you want to go fast in a sedan, go into a Dodge dealership and pick up a Charger. That said, the XSC takes corners well, and the brakes are surprisingly strong. So all things considered, there's a lot to like about the way the Camry handles. In addition to the standard backup camera, our test car came with the blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, a $500 option. You can also get lane departure warning, automatic high beams, and adaptive cruise control. The one thing you can't get in this Camry is forward collision warning and avoidance. For that, you'll have to wait for the 2018 model. 
The 2017 Toyota Camry starts at $23,070. Moving up to the SE will set you back $23,840, while both the XLE and XSE start at $26,310. Our XSE test model with the blind spot system, power moonroof, and the convenience package, which includes push button start, keyless entry, and other features, came in at $29,985. That's competitively priced as sedans go, especially one that's well equipped. Toyota promises more power and better fuel economy in the 2018 Camry, though it still hasn't released specific numbers. And until it does, there's not a lot to keep you waiting for the 18. You still won't get CarPlay, and frankly, this Camry looks a heck of a lot better. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to see more videos, including our preview of the 2018 Camry. If you think this Camry looks better than the one replacing it, let us know in the comments. And to read my full review on the 2017 Toyota Camry, go to cargurus.com.